Let's do some discourse on this newest Giguk video, The Death of Classic Anime. Contrary to what you may think, I'm not actually against all the more popular anime YouTubers like Giguk, considering the position others have found themselves in like The Anime Man or Aki Deris. I think Giguk is probably the best and least offensive mainstream anime YouTube channel there is. But yet, his latest video is so interesting, perhaps even entrancing. At the core, the message of the video is something admirable. Gigak is saying, Just pick a classic title that's been collecting dust on your watch list, and I guarantee it'll be a way more fulfilling experience than watching another disposable show that's been airing in the last year. But also, Gigak is making another suggestion. Or even if you disagree with my opinion that we haven't gotten any recently. And this is where my fascination with the video is. Because while promoting classic, older anime is a good thing to do, it's wrapped in a facade of the death of classic anime. Because it's not like classic anime have died, right? It's a subjective and community-driven decision. You might very well call Mob Psycho Season 2 a classic, as Gigak nearly does in his own video, when it hasn't even been a year since it started. So I'd like to engage with Gigak on this topic as to what a classic is, and as to why I disagree that there haven't been any classic anime within the last couple of years. Classic anime, as described by Gigak, are a couple of things. Anime that defined their generation and pioneered the landscape you see today. Despite Despite how great I thought last year was, it had zero classics. Number one, staying power. Classics are classics because they have stood the test of time. Point number two, impact. I feel there needs to be a level of impact and influence, and this goes in two ways. An impact on the anime industry itself that influences future titles and the landscape of anime, or an impact on anime pop culture and the general audience of the time. Because if an anime hits every other category but isn't that popular or widely influential, in my opinion it's closer to a cult classic. But unless there's a general agreed consensus that it's up to a certain level of high standards, people won't take it seriously. Of all the three criteria, it's staying power that seems to be missing most the time. The anime that I would say has come closest to becoming a classic recently is Mob Psycho 100 Season 2. What exactly is it missing? Well, it's precisely because it's a season 2. But as it stands, it wasn't even the most popular show of its own season, as I think every generation will have a long-running shonen that defines that era and goes down as a classic. With it being the staple of gateway anime and its long-running nature allows it far more time to build the popularity and impact and staying power cause, well, it sticks around for so long. So if there is an exception to everything I've said here, it would, of course, be My Hero Academia. Sorry if that was tedious, but I think using these we can form an understanding of Gigak's perspective on classic definitions. So a classic, in his eyes at least, is an anime that a. Has at least some influence in the broader anime landscape. This could be either in terms of the effect on the industry or just anime culture generally. This is the most important aspect of defining a classic, since if it's just good but makes no waves then it's deemed a cult classic. B. It has to be good. Fairly innocent, but it also has to be good into the future as well. They need to stand the test of time. If five years later you look and see that the shows it influenced are outshining it and making it look dated, then it's not really a classic per se, more so just a landmark anime in the genre that it occupies. C. The potential for a show to become a classic hinges on its release window. A show cannot become a classic if it's years between entries, although shonen anime gets like a free representative due to their nature. So now that we understand what he views as a classic, let's start engaging with what he's actually saying. So I want to start off with the quote that there were no classic anime in 2018. It had zero classics. In winter, while it may be cheating to include Three Gatsu no Line, it did air during that period, so I'll use it. Three Gatsu couldn't be a classic? Not only is it the ninth highest rated anime of all time, it's only three positions behind Legend of the Galactic heroes, but to say it hasn't had an influence, or has influence, would be absurd. Not only was it able to pull in some of the greats of the otaku world, like Kentaro Miura, the creator of Berserk, and Tetsuya Chiba, the creator of Ashita no Jo, but its way of constantly flipping through styles and emotions and movement has rubbed off on shows like Kaguya-sama. It's also stayed at the top 10 position for about two years now, so it does have staying power. Also, the second season came out less than a year before the first season ended. There's also Devilman Crybaby, the anime of the year according to Crunchyroll, which has been the poster boy of Netflix releasing anime onto their website. It's a huge point of discourse in the community, and if Devilman flopped, I don't think we'd seen as much discourse and hot take opinions about anime starting to come exclusively to Netflix and online licensing. I don't think there was really anything in spring or winter, but in the fall there was part 5 of Jojo, which is just another entry into the already uber popular Jojo series, but more importantly there was SSSS Gridman, a show I haven't seen, but is quite popular and fairly 
well scored, and I'm sure that in terms of mecha anime that it'll be talked about, especially because it has Trigger's name on it. Four classic anime in a year? That sounds awful. And like, yeah, but other anime are gonna come up as time passes, and some of those will fade as well. It also averages out to about one a season, which is pretty neato, but it's also up to a debate as to if any of them are classics. I think something really interesting to take note in the video is his inconsistent metric as to what he assesses anime as quality. So we understand that the quality is of community consensus, but yet Gigax says that you wouldn't really call SAO a classic? If you were to look at Mal, it averages at about 7.5 out of 10, making it around the 1,500th most critically acclaimed anime. If you were to take a random sample of people who watched and rated SAO, there is a 56% chance that a person you selected would have rated it an 8 or above. So what does Gigak mean by this? Well, there's also community disdain as well that plays into it. SAO is the third most popular anime and very highly rated amongst those that watch it. There's also waves of people who hate it with a passion. It's a joke at this point to even rag on SAO, especially on YouTube, because it's so hated amongst fans. So honestly, it's not really about the group consensus about a show, it's really about what feels like a classic to him. No offense made when I say that, but it is true. Well, there are less shows pioneering new things, which is understandable considering how old this medium is right now. I don't quite understand this. Like, things are being pioneered all the time. USA's and Shinkai styles, while on different aesthetic ends of anime, are both pioneering their styles to great effect. See Devilman and Your Name as examples. And besides aesthetic, we've had the rise of web manga anime like One Punch Man, Mob Psycho 100, and Maiden Abyss. So there are always new things to find in each season, it's just about looking for it. But that's the thing, if everything's special, nothing is. Let's be completely real. Anime overall has gotten better. There is more good anime, but there is also more bad anime as well. Besides personal critical taste, there are anime releases that you'd probably never watch or might refuse based on practice, like children's shows or short form shows which just go on forever, or even just adaptations of games or light novels that people can smell the stink on from a mile away. What's my point? Oh yeah, be more critical and understanding of your own perspective as to what you deem good. I'd argue that you'd be hard pressed to find any show that lingers around for longer than three months, let alone years or decades later. Okay, so like besides the obvious game, of shows which air over the course of multiple years, like Hunter x Hunter, this also excludes like the cycle of modern anime. The first season gets made, there are fans of it, so they make more in order to make money off the existing fan base, like One Punch Man or Attack on Titan. But this is such a strange take to have because 40 of the top 50 highest rated anime of all time were released after 2010, so people do really like some of the stuff that's come out. And while perhaps you could say that our scoring of anime has gotten softer, which I would agree with, it's also strange to suggest that these shows haven't stayed around. Surely if they didn't then people would start removing scores or lowering them if they didn't think they were as good as they remembered them, right? Like, I don't really want this to go on for too long, so I'll just drop this last little piece. I find it strange how he says that Boku no Hero Academia is an exception to the rules of a classic he sets out, but Boku no Hero Academia was released a year apart each season. It's also not really pioneering anything new. Like, it's a shonen that's taken influence from the global rise of superheroes across the world. It's not even like a good anime, or at least of quality that I would rate it higher than the average rating of Mob or SAO. So really, classic anime haven't died. There's always going to be classics, we just need time and all will reveal itself to us. Personally, Mob Psycho 100 Season 2, Girls Last Tour, Three Guts No Lion, In This Corner of the World, Koe no Katachi, Space Patrol Luluko, Devilman Crybaby, and Land of the Lustrous are all either already classics or potentially classics. I like what Gigak is trying to do, although I think it's disingenuous to all the amazing anime that get released now to suggest that none of them are classics. I've been Kazimoto, subscribe and follow me on Twitter, adios.